New order, and here to stay on XFM 104.9. Well, we're here to stay, aren't we, Steve? True enough. Well, for another four weeks anyway, then we're, uh, then we're off. Then four right. more shows. They'll have to order a new DJ. All <laughs> <laughs> All right, that was genius. <laughs> hey, oh, wow. oh I'm Ricky, simple as that. I'm Ricky Gervais, Steve Mitchell, and <laughs> oh. Carl Pilkington. <laughs> oh man, did anyone uh, read the uh, Guardian yesterday? It was Steve's big. We, we we were interviewed together. Steve I've never been interviewed before in the paper. I've certainly never had my photo in a national. We were very paper excited. Before. We loved the interview. It was talking about our top ten albums between us. We loved it. We talked really fast, like school kids. We were excited. It was a great interview, and all the way through, it was Ricky Gervais <laughs> with his writing partner, Steve Mitchell. Stephen Mitchell. It's <laughs> not even gutted. like Merchant. He phoned me up the night before, and he was gutted. And I know he thought it's, it's awful, and it was big letters, and just all the way through in the caption, and it's just like, oh god. But it's embarrassing. It's embarrassing, do you know what I mean? It's embarrassing because it's like I was trying to get in the paper, I couldn't believe my luck. And then that just draws attention to the fact that I'm not a celebrity <laughs> and consequently they can't even remember my name. Uh, but the worst thing was that, um, uh, one of my favourite albums of all time, I, I said in there, was, um, uh, Blood on the Tracks by Bob Dylan. And I said, because, you know, I think one of the most beautiful songs ever is If You See Her Say Hello. And of course these people were sort of transcribing it from, you know, a dictaphone. It came out, um, my, my favourite song of all time was If You See a Sailor. <laughs> <laughs> if you see, if a you see a sailor. Oh, hello. <laughs> Fruity. Oh, Bob, Bob Drillboids. Uh, <laughs> Blood on the trab with. Where's the sailor gone to? <laughs> uh, with Ricky Gervais and Steve LeMichling. <laughs> Oh, but I don't know. They must have thought my name was was Mitchell all along. They obviously well, never uh, knew. Uh, the evidence is there. <laughs> but I, I don't know what it was like. They, they reported in the paper that we'd been nominated for a Sony, and it said uh, Ricky Gervais, who hosts the breakfast show on XFM, and it's that sort of. It's just guessing. It's like uh, uh, presumably someone's gone. Does he host the breakfast show? Someone's gone. Yeah. And that's, that's <laughs> their research done. Uh, yeah. But there was a thing about, um, uh, The Office set in Swindon. That's someone going, just write an article about The Office. Where's it set? <laughs> Swindon, I think. Is it? <laughs> yeah. Okay, that'll do. Yeah. Yeah. Even Pathetic. we research the show now and again, don't we? Yeah. Even we look things up, well, actually, people phone in. Usually yeah. that fella. What's that fella's name that calls in who's not got the website? He's got a funny name. Oh. Gilwell <laughs> or something. James. Phone in if you remember, uh, uh, what his name is. Yeah. He's James. All... James at Lose Control. Yeah, what's his surname, though? Oh, for goodness sake, this is just oh. gonna be interesting to him! Yeah. And his friends! Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah! <laughs> you we remember? Better, we better play another record. Yes. Come, oh, I'll tell you what, if Johnny you like- Johnny Mango. Mango, that's it, yeah. Now, if you like Alvis Costello's Allison, <laughs> or maybe- <laughs> Rick, Freeze, do. Freeze, um, My Brother Jake- One of my favourites. Stay tuned! Badly Drawn Boy, Silent Sign. Cracking tune, man. XFM 104.9. Maybe there'll be a few silent sighs around London on the 4th of May when, uh, that's it, we're off the air for we three are months. Yeah. Wow, you're really getting into the DJ patter today. Yeah. Brilliant. Yeah, it was good. <laughs> yeah. D d d <laughs> slick it's only links. taken, what is it, five years? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Now you're finally uh, as good as Foxy. Coming up. Yes. That anecdote that Carl didn't get to last week about Neil Armstrong. Oh, <laughs> right. I yes. can't wait. <laughs> it's because he took three links telling us about the horse. Yes, of course. Of the course. horse. Think yeah. of that. Wow. Um, I went out with Carl. On Thursday night, right, right. It was one of the most enjoyable nights. I, 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 we just had like went out for about what five or six pints, a little crawl, and adventures happened around Carl. Yeah, and just me sitting talking to him was just incredible. I'm thinking that a competition would be win a pint with Carl. Yes. Just, you know, be they hell just of a have gift. to go for a pint, and they can ask him anything they want. Yeah, he's just, <laughs> he's just great. Uh, we met my friend, didn't we? Tell him all about that. Mm, yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. did you enjoy it as much as Ricky, Carl? Um, yeah, there was things I learned as well, like, which was, which was good. Okay. You, you know his mate Robin, don't you? Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll, uh, You'll I'll discuss, discuss that later. I'll tell you later about He's got all his near-death experiences to come. Win a pipe. And, of course, coming up, um, uh, Carl's homework was, uh, the quotes. And Carl's come up with a great idea to show that anyone can do quotes. He's, he's invented a thing like faking it, where he's got two real quotes, right. right, and he's made one up. Okay. And he's gonna fall us. I, I, I bet we won't be able to tell Brilliant. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> Sorry, what was the challenge last Look at him looking at us. What's the matter with you? It's just that before, you were like, no, this is good for you. But what? now it's turned into a game. <laughs> <laughs> at your expense. Yeah. yeah. Have you only uh, just, is it only just dawned on you? <laughs> Carl, well, I'm joking. It's great, honestly. It's really good. What was it, the Carl challenge last week? You said it. I thought we did the quotes last week. 
No, but, um, it, 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 I gave him a, um, b ha happiness. B happiness. It's all about happiness right. and what, the, 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 you know, pursuit of happiness. Mm. And it's in sort of like quote form and everything. But, um, Carl's gonna do a couple of ones and faking it just to show. I mean, because he's been coming up with fables all week as well now. He comes up with something, he goes, that's a fable, <laughs> isn't it? And he tells me the other, it, so he's, he's getting good. <laughs> now. Do it all. Should we play another track? Or have you got something, you got something oh, special? I bought in, um, uh, I saw, um, uh, Alvis Costello and Jonathan Ross a couple of weeks ago, and he did just an acoustic version of Alison. And I forgot what an amazing song it is. Mm. And it, it's just, he's, he's fantastic. He's, he's, he's the man. Listen, this is a guitar sound. It's so beautiful. My aim is true to provide quality <laughs> entertainment <laughs> of a Saturday. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was classy. Alvis Costello and his attractions, and Alison on <laughs> XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais. Steve Mitchell here yeah. and uh, Carl Pilkington. Oh, I, yeah, uh, one of them, it? it's going all right. It's going all right. I um obviously been doing some acting, as you know. I mentioned it last week. Doing this uh, this sort of comedy pilot this week, Carl. You're going to be loving this. I've been doing stunts. <laughs> I swear to God, I've been doing my own stunts with the guy that once made Christopher Reeve fly as Superman, right? And I was doing stunts. I had to do a thing where I, that my character has to, commit, <laughs> has to commit suicide. <laughs> I wonder Don't think then. we didn't bring that up. <laughs> Were you anywhere near that horse? No? Fine, let's carry on. <laughs> and, um... <laughs> we, uh... We, I had to, my character has to commit suicide and he has to sort of, uh, leap off a building. Mm. So the first shot... Don't think that's a... That's something for comedy. <laughs> <laughs> well, we were up on a roof, and uh, obviously they had the crash mats and stuff, and I had to kind of leap off um, and land on the mats and stuff. And obviously, I was petrified the whole time because I was wearing my glasses. <laughs> <laughs> petrified that they might get broken, so I was like not really doing it properly, kind of leaping like like what you know people when they can't dive into a swimming pool, and so they put that one foot out first to sort Is of break it you, their fall. Was it you that told me that, that you you could never get into fights? No, I could never get into fights or go in a mosh pit because of my glasses. <laughs> I've that's missed out right. in life because I can't- I'm because right. if- if I was in a fight and I say, come on then, you are, you know, and, and I was in a pub or something, they'd just have to whiff- whiff off the glasses, <laughs> just knock them off, I'm done for. <laughs> I- I got- I love you nothing. really bad short-sighted, are you? Yeah, but if, 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 but anything's an advantage in a fight, isn't it? And the fact that they're just a blur <laughs> is bound to hamper my otherwise brilliant, you know, ninja skills. Uh, so, yeah. um- so yeah, I've never got into a fight, I've never been in a fight at all, I've never, Sorry, as I say, been in the on, on the wire. So this was making me sort of a bit worried, um, yeah. uh, and anyway, so then I think, well fine, I've, got, I've done my stunt, and I did it, and everyone clapped, they were pleased with it, and the guy who said I was very good. So then they drive us to the next location, right, I'm thinking I've done my stunts now. There's a crane, I think, what's going on here? Now they need to shoot me, like, I've already done the stunt where I've sort of f leapt off the building, now they've got to actually see me falling, right? So I have to get strapped in with this huge belt, and they click wires onto me, and they hoist me about 30, 40 foot into the air, on this wire, and I have to, and then they drop me at great speed, and I have to scream and shout. You know, it was partly acting. <laughs> <laughs> and, glasses um, on. Glasses. Uh, by this time, I'd managed to get some wire fixed to my glasses, so they wouldn't come off my head. I assure you. They were stunt glasses. <laughs> they, well. they, they were doing glasses. their own stunts. Exactly. exactly. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So, um, so they hoist me into there on this thing. They do a couple of sort of uh, sort of demo versions, you know, and just gradually ease me up higher and higher, so I kind of become acclimatised to it, and. um, they get, they get me about 30 feet up, and they've got these huge crash mats, like those great big ones you always see because stunt people have. And they set up the camera and stuff down below, and I'm, while I'm up in the air dangling there, they remove those crash mats, and they replace them with those really thin ones that you always see, like, um, teenage gymnasts using on Blue Peter. Do you know what I mean? The really yeah. thin ones they used to have at school, right? And I'm looking down at this, and I'm thinking now, they may as well have shouted up, if you fall, you're done for, but we might be able to protect the equipment. Do you know what I mean? It was what, so rubbish. But you weren't gonna land on the floor, presumably. Well, the idea was that the wire would stop that. Oh, like, I see. But yeah. there was no safe. That, that was their that safety. That was the safety net. Why did they not leave the real ones in? Because they they had to. They, I don't know for yeah, the shot the and stuff. I they had to. Uh, well. They had to be able to do it. But anyway, what was particularly joyful is one of the other actors pointed this out. Right, this is the um, <laughs> this is the health and safety statement from the stunt guys. Right, and they they obviously have to write up this health and safety statement about how they do it. And it says we confirm that we have proper safety policies, procedures to comply with the Health and Safety Act 1974, and that we will not do anything which compromises the health, safety, and welfare of your production crew, actors, or members of the public. If the above situation changes, we'll advise you immediately. <laughs> I mean, if they think that maybe they do want to hurt members of the public, look at that fat one over there, just try and hit her yeah. and bring him down. Don't worry about that one. Don't worry. Yeah. She can take it. She can take it. But, uh, so that reassured me, obviously, and, um, now my whole body's racked with pain. Limbs, arms, head, neck. Uh, well, unbelievable. Well, is the shot worth having? I you, mean, you, probably not. You, you wish you had- You know what the cameraman whispered to me? The cameraman whispered to me, he'd probably never use it. Yeah, Steve, you'll wish you hadn't told that wimpy tale when you hear Three, just three random tales of near-death experiences that Carl told me. Right. Coming up. I mean, 
Honestly. Really? At least you had stunt people and crash mats. Yeah. yeah and you got yeah. paid. Yeah. yeah. The things that he got up to, just through stupidity, <laughs> well. will put you just what? Mm. Which what what one of what one of them wasn't through stupidity? Cakes. I'm already excited. The cake one? Yeah. Which one's that? Sorry, you had a near death experience involving Hold a cake. Hold on, I've got three. I've got the I've got the paper mm. round, the the snicking slate, and the the Mr. Freeze. What's the cake one? Yeah, I suppose. The, the cream cake. Oh, yeah. Right, Play now you're record. talking in riddles. Play Can you have these next? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Play a record. <laughs> Cooper Temple Claws. Who needs enemies? Good question, lads. Nobody. <laughs> Six <laughs> FM, one four point nine. I'm Ricky Gervais. Oh, they you? should print a little book of those. <laughs> <laughs> They're great. <laughs> oh, how you can relate any song or artist <laughs> to anything else. Easy. Joyful. Easy. Well, yeah, so, uh, m me and, uh, me and Carl went out. Uh, for a beer, and it was, uh, it was great, wasn't it? Yeah, enjoy yourself. We started yeah, off, good. and you met my mate Robin, didn't you? Yeah. And, uh, um, some of the stories. Do you want to tell Steve some things about Robin that Robin. you learned? Do you know him well? Yes. Well, um, do you know about his, his worm problem as a kid? Go on. Right. He, uh, what I can remember is he, he had worms as a kid. Not sure how you get them, he never answered me, he was getting a bit touchy about it. Right. But I, I, this is like the second time I met him. I think he was a bit annoyed that Ricky told me about his problem. What, yes. now, what, uh, now, straight away, you not being there, instinctively, what do you think went on with this story about worms? My suspicion yeah. is rather like when you told a group of people that Robin had once suckled milk from a cow's udder. <laughs> yeah. I, I yeah. Did he mention that as well? Yeah. Yeah. Th uh, my suspicion is that, uh, like the cow story, the worm story is not true. But and why, Robin why would he get so sort of uppity about it? Well, imagine because if, it's not true. imagine if he, that wasn't the first time he'd done it. Imagine if he did that every single time. <laughs> He was with somebody for the first time and Robin was, uh, just met them. He tells that- he will tell that story to anyone. But they do say there's no smoke without fire. <laughs> Poor Robin! I also told him- That's a fable. I also- I, <laughs> I also told him that the way Robin cured these worms- yep. Was because the doctor told his mother, right, to hold a piece of ham or cheese near Robin's anus so the worms would come out for the food and he believed it. I'll I said tell you to, why though. I said to Robin used to sit on spam to try and get the worms out and he believed it. But Steve, right, do you remember that story about th ooh, three or four years ago where there was some bloke in the army, he went away to somewhere, Vietnam or whatever, he was messing about in the woods, um, messing <laughs> about in the woods? Shouldn't he have been fighting? <laughs> whatever. Yeah. Right, and he, w he walked through some lake and I think he'd cut his toe or something <laughs> on, on something and some worm of some sort crawled in the, in the gash. Yeah. And, um, it, it was in his body and the doctor said, we've got to get this out of your body. So what they did was, they said, right, the, the thinnest part of something of your body that things can crawl through is on the top of your head. So they wrap some Where the skull is. So they wrap some bacon. <laughs> <laughs> no, they didn't! They did. Ah! That's all right. Everyone... So he's gone in by the toe. Uh, so what we do is, I'll tell you what, that worm's probably heading straight for the head. We put a bit of bacon on it. The thinnest part of the body is the, the, the skull. Of course it's not the thinnest part of the body. It's the, where your brain case is, isn't it? It's the hard- the skull. There was- there was a reason for it. And it was like they, they, um, stuck some bacon on his head and- <laughs> As ever, the vital piece of information, uh, <laughs> i.e. the reason, Carl seems to have forgotten. It, because the worm was in, in his body and they said every- you know, everyone likes the smell of bacon. Including even worms. A worm, again, even, a, even a Vietnamese lake worm. They, <laughs> they, 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 oh, they, they love remember bacon. Remember last week, remember last week when I said about the little fella with the bone with no brain and you were proved wrong? No. Please. No, 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 no. We were saying it wasn't a little fella. We were saying it was a stillborn child. It wasn't no, a little you're fella. You're changing it now. You weren't having any of it last right, week. Right, hang on a minute. Let's just, I'm getting confused. There was a Vietnamese... There wasn't a Viet there was a Vietnamese snake that went inside of no, a soldier. Where? A little like maggot or some sort <laughs> that you have to get out of your body because it causes problems. Yes, <laughs> and so in order <laughs> to get it out of the body, they strapped bacon to his head. Yeah. <laughs> that is great. This doctor. And did that work? I think so. They had a picture of him smiling. <laughs> oh, God, what the worm or the bloke? The bloke. Oh, <laughs> dear. Honest honestly, I, I hope someone knows the story. And um, right, just it was about three years ago, I reckon. Okay. And, um, yeah, it did work. GI so, G. G. bacon. So this is why <laughs> I, I, when, And when so what, the, wor the worm burrowed out of his head to get the bacon? <laughs> get to the bacon. Right. 
Um, <laughs> <laughs> That's great. So I this is that. this is why when Robin was telling his story, I, I was a little bit disappointed if it wasn't true. Right. Because in a way, you know, Robin's never been to Vietnam. <laughs> <laughs> no, but what I, I would do you really think that Robin, well, as Robin said at the time, Carl, why would I sit on ham then tell Ricky Gervais? <laughs> it's a very good point. Because if he was a kid, you do, you do daft things like that as a kid. <laughs> Right. You know it's the mean? telling Ricky Gervais, though. Yeah. And yeah. then, oh, bless him. Okay. And, and then anyway, then, uh, Robin left and, uh, I tried to chase him but he got away <laughs> and he <laughs> knows that we, uh, yeah. Um, and then we had a few pints and then, uh, Carl embarked on some of the greatest stories ever told. Have you, can you tell the story about your dad? Let me run it, I haven't spoke to him all week so let me run it by him. Okay, play records. Cause, uh, you know. What we got? We've got, uh, one of Steve's Yeah, teams. well, bizarrely enough, this comes from the, uh, Teachers 2 soundtrack, oh. the soundtrack to the, uh, the current TV series. There's a slight whiff of nepotism in the air. Yeah. Rick, would you like to explain why? Well, that's why you're doing it, though my girlfriend, uh, worked on it. But, yeah. um, you were gonna play this anyway, weren't you? Well, I was, actually. Bizarrely enough, I was gonna play some I Am Clute, and, uh, this is from, as I say, the, uh, the Teachers soundtrack, and this is called To You. It's a good track. <laughs> I am Clute, and a track called To You from the, uh, Teacher's soundtrack that's also got, uh, I noticed the Electric Soft Parade, The Hives, Star Sailor, Feeder, uh, Turin Break, Smoky Rev on there. It's a good little collection. Lovely. Carl, uh, has just had confirmation he's looking smug because someone phoned up and went, it is true, it's a Lao Gai Chi worm and you wrap bacon around your head. That's all the bloke knew as well. Yeah. And his name was Gary. Yeah. So I I'm not having it. No. And he said, he said, see, that's why the Robin thing isn't so weird. He said, but when you said he tried it with cheese, he said I was having none of it. <laughs> Strokes, hard to explain. Like Carl, really? Yes. Yes. So, Carl, concentrate. Yeah, go on. So, we'll, um, we'll, we'll leave the worm with the bacon wrapped round the head, shall we? Well, if you're ever caught in the jungle. Yeah. Always carry some. Bit of Danish. <laughs> <laughs> Good advice. <laughs> Lovely. So, would you like to start on your, uh, to Steve, because I've heard all these. Um, uh, well, we won't do them all. Well, um, well, st we'll start off with the, uh, the Mr. Freeze. Tell Steve the story of Mr. Freeze. This is the first time he nearly died. This, this is the most serious of the lot, really. So, um, what it was, do you know, like, um, I don't know if your mum and dad did the same thing, but, like, they do the weekly shopping on, on, like, a Friday. Yeah. So when, when you got to Thursday, <coughs> there wouldn't be much stuff left in the cupboard. It'd just be like, you know, your Jacob's crackers and mm. stuff like that. So when they'd, when they'd been to the supermarket and they came back, I was like, uh, you know, what's that saying? Like a pig in, you know, I, I loved it. It was like loads of food coming in, loads of biscuits. He loads nearly of said, what is that saying? He nearly said pig in shit. <laughs> right. Is that the saying? <laughs> yeah. Right. So, um, so yeah, all this food comes in. Thank God like, he didn't. <laughs> 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 Otherwise he'd have been in trouble. That's true enough. Because he's, he's culpable for our actions. Because exactly. he's a producer. So technically, oh. that twat's in charge. Yep. Go on. Right. So anyway, so there's loads of food and I'm like, oh yeah, look at this and chocolate biscuits and, uh, you know, penguins and stuff. Bacon. So, and bacon. <laughs> Just in case, you never know. So, um, so, anyway, my mum and dad's putting the food away. Me and our kid are like, he's already grabbed something, gone back upstairs. <laughs> it's like feral children. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's like a quest for fire. <gasps> <laughs> and then they run upstairs. <laughs> it was, it, what did he just sit under the bed, <laughs> gnawing at some sort of pig's trotter? So, so I <laughs> saw, um, do you remember Mr. Freeze Pops? I do, yeah. So, right. well, they're kind of like popsicles, icicles. Yeah, but really long, like yeah, a foot yeah, long, yeah. right? Yeah. So I thought, I'll have one of them. So I grabbed it. Went for the nutritious stuff first. Absolutely. And, uh, and like my mum and dad are putting this stuff away and what have you. And I, I rip it open and knock it back. Right, straight away, just right back like Swallow that. Swallow it, right it. Yeah. But it, it went down the wrong way, right? So <laughs> what, I down your shirt? So I, I was like, oh god, I can't breathe. And my mum and dad didn't, uh, didn't even know what I'd ate. Do you know what I mean? It went, it, I ate it so, f f so quick. Yeah. And, uh, I'm sort of tapping my mum on the back going, uh, uh, she's going, oh god, you know, he's, he's choking again because I was always choking. <laughs> if there was one thing, I don't know if I've got like a small throat, <laughs> but, but I mean, even Ricky knows, I can't drink that much, can I? Yeah. Do you know, or I'm eat pebbles. A, I'm, <laughs> I'm not a, a quick drink drinker. I'd always, um, I think I'm scared of like swallowing stuff. Yeah. And, uh, it was like bottle tops and mint imperials and stuff. I was always, god. I was always choking on stuff. Bottle <laughs> so, so anyway, she's going, oh god, what's he picked up in that now? <laughs> Drop it! Drop it! So, it is hit his nose with a stick. <laughs> so I was going, oh, I'm choking. At this point, my dad had like, I think he'd put his his share away, you know, his food away, and he'd gone. His to share, the, I yeah. love it. Yeah. He'd, he'd gone to watch like 
winner takes all or whatever <laughs> in a lounge and I, I was in the kitchen and I was starting to like just I didn't care anymore do you know what I mean I hadn't I, I just got to that point where I wasn't struggling anymore you just thought I, I'm done I just for. was like falling to the ground and my mum's going you know get in here I think it's serious and uh, my dad comes in and sort of starts shouting at me saying that's what you get for being greedy he didn't even know what I'd eaten. Well, it was it was the moment to teach you a lesson. Certainly. So he's there like that, and my mum's going, "Oh, look at him!" And my lips were going purple, and my eyes were rolling into the back of my head. He looked like Marilyn Manson. And uh, so anyway, she grabbed me from behind and did that that fireman thing, the Heimlich maneuver. Yeah, and uh, you know, winded me, and it came up, and I was all right. What the whole right. popsicle came flying back out? I don't, I don't, you see, that's what I don't understand, because. There was no, nothing it, there. No, I mean, just a little bit. No, it swells up, doesn't it? Because it irritated it. So it went down your, this sort of like your epiglottis. It went down the wrong way. Like it went into your air canal instead of your so throat. And it, it sort of it, it sort of spasms. And that's the that's the fear. You just got to calm it down and relax. So, so in time, I would have been alright. Yeah, anyway. you don't. Um, well, no, yeah. you might have. So that's so so so. so that's hang on. So, but, but, so no, no, no. But the weird thing is, like for like three days after that, I felt like a sort of a uh, special person. <laughs> I was I went to school. I'm not I did, sat up saying nothing. I, I did full days. <laughs> <laughs> a special needs person. <laughs> yeah. I, I went I went to school the next three days after that. I didn't like wag it or anything. I did full days. I love that. Three days turn over. <laughs> <into the laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. After three days you thought screw it. Yeah, well, did, did a quick history yeah. exam. Yeah. But yeah. have you ever had that where you've like felt like I've been given another chance here? Mm. Right, next that one. That's popsicle. That's popsicle hell, we call that. Right, next one. Uh, which one's the next one? Oh, what about your paper round? Right. Can I ask very quickly, did your life flash before your eyes like they say it did? No, I just s sort of went really calm and like, I'm ready for this now. Right. I wasn't bothered, you know what I mean? I you had no scared. regrets? No. Nope. No. Nope. Um, it was weird. It was really weird. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, the paper round one. Uh, paper round, I'd still say it's the best job I've ever had. <laughs> And he means it! No, I really oh. enjoyed it. It's like, you know, oh. you, you, <laughs> you don't have to work with anyone else, right? Uh. So you make your own rules. <laughs> Just think of that. Um, yep. you know, um, you sort of You're around. spreading information well, yeah, to people. Yeah, vital information. giving a service. Yep. And no one else is around, you know, you can just do what you want and think about stuff whilst you're cycling around on your bike. It's really good. Yeah. So, um. So anyway, imagine the stuff he's thinking about <laughs> when he's riding around. <laughs> I can't. Oh, so <laughs> getting in the head of a salamander. <laughs> so anyway, I, I loved it, and even though I only got like fifty p a day, right? No matter what the weather was like and stuff, I used to get up at half past four and uh, go and do the round. And um, why did you get up at half past four? Because I wanted to watch the Pink Panther at five thirty, so <laughs> I wanted to get me paper round done. I said, "Why didn't you watch the Pink Panther?" And then, and then he, went, he went, oh, I can't sit there thinking I've got my paper round to do. <laughs> He'll ruin it for him. Yeah. So is it a good job or not? Go so 4.30 four, four I was up, up and about. And this morning it was like winter, really bad winter, bad snow, you know, freezing cold, really windy and all that. And my mum said to me before I went to bed, she said, don't be getting up tomorrow. I'll give you the 50p. I said, it's not about the 50p. <laughs> so, you know, people want the papers and stuff. <laughs> so, um... Conscientious. <laughs> so, anyway, I went to bed thinking, you know, that's it. I'm, I'm, I've told her I'm still going, so, you know, whatever. Go to sleep, get up in the morning, and, uh, put all my kit on. And I, I used to have layers of clothing on, because it was really cold. They had, like, a big anorak on with the fur on. I had, like, waterproof pants. And I got my paper round bag. And, uh, I went downstairs to get out. And tried to open the door, and it was locked. Oh God, was, uh, uh, so she'd locked it so I couldn't go out. So I'm searching around the house looking for the keys. She must have hid them somewhere. I thought, oh God, you know, I've, I've got the papers to do. So I thought, how can I get out? So I went upstairs, climbed out of the bathroom window. God. Right, and to try and jump out of the bed bathroom window onto the porch. But the problem was, I had so much gear on, I was like the Michelin man. <laughs> so I could hardly, I could hardly move as it is. Yeah. And I'm trying to get out the window, and I, I, I'm like, Try to stretch down like that, get me foot on the on the porch. And my bag got caught on like the hook of do you know like how you have a hook so you can put the window open? Right, yeah. Like, the yeah, little yeah, arm goes yeah. on. My bag had got caught on that. I was holding on to the like the, the wall and my foot on the thing so I couldn't sort of pull it pull it away in case I pulled it away and then fell on my head. Yeah. So I'm stuck there. Dangling. Dangling. My dad comes back from working nights. Yeah. He thinks I'm a burglar. Gets out his gun. So, he, <laughs> so he's shouting and stuff, going mad and going, Dad, it's me. And he had to give us a hand using a- <laughs> He's heard that wily trick in Manchester before. <laughs> <laughs> he had to help me using a washing prop thing. 
a big stick. What did he do? Well, he said, just that hold on for your dear life, and I I'll sort of push the paper bag off the hook. Why didn't he go upstairs and sort it out? It was at that point where I was in the middle, there was nothing you could do, do you know what I mean? Mm. It's right. at that point where you've just got to make a decision. Yeah. And by the time he got upstairs, who knows what might have happened. Sure. Do you know yeah. what I mean? You've got to act there and then, don't <laughs> listen around. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, so- And you could hear downstairs, now here he is, the Pink Panther. <laughs> yeah. Dad! <laughs> Pink Panther. Hurry up! Panther. Ever so pink! <laughs> oh. <laughs> so that, that was close to death, cause that, I must have been about thirty foot in the air. Yeah. And I would have, you know, that would have been nasty for Phil. Fell to the concrete sure. paving, so. Well, and, uh, um, there's, more, there's more to come. Should we play a record and mm. come back to this? Because he's got more. Oh, yeah, no. I'm, I'm, no there, there must be one of them where you did fall on your head. This is the one I'm waiting for. There's got to be one. That was explained so much. Yeah. I nearly did. Nearly brought me back. Jeez. Once. My dad said, I better can't kick me out. And I said, I better can. And, uh, I, <laughs> I don't remember this. You didn't tell me this one. You, you no, I better can what? I was in the garden, summer's day, and uh, it was that era when, like, doing kung fu and all that was really popular. Sure. And I was like messing about in the garden, punching the tree and stuff. <laughs> and my dad said, <laughs> "What a kid he must have been." <laughs> my dad said, "I bet you can't kick your height." Kick uh, your height? What yeah. you mean, yeah. kick as high as yourself? Yeah. yeah. So I must have been like five foot or something yeah. then. And uh, I said, "Of course I can." So I bet you can't. But instead of doing it on the grass, I did it on like the the concrete bit. <sighs> Kicked it. Actually did it. I went there. You go. But then like get my foot down quick enough and land. Oh, on you, you paused to pause to say, "There, I've done it." <laughs> yeah. As opposed to putting your foot back on the ground. And, uh, landed on my back and I, I, I'd still get back trouble now. Do you? Because he say that, don't they? So, he, uh, uh, I'll just cut a long story short, he gave me about four or five near death experiences and he went, and the whole point of this, he went, so that's why I think I'm gonna die of something horrible, like cancer. And I went, why? He went, right, you ready for this? Yeah. He said, well I don't check my balls. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> he said, I don't like the feel. <laughs> <laughs> Carl, Carl, always check your balls. <laughs> Do you I check your like the feel? Why don't you like the feel of your own balls? They just, I mean, you know that I don't like bodies anyway. Right. Do you know what I mean? It worries me a bit that you've got all that going on in your body, right, and your skin's keeping it all in place. Right. <laughs> <laughs> stop, 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 stop. We're going down a whole other avenue of discussion. Let's play a track. Let's come back to it. Oh, right, I've brought in this, uh, this is, uh, free. Um, you know, uh, you'll know from the Jeans commercials. Yeah, all right now. Long time ago, yeah. all right now, yeah. But this is a great little track. This is, uh, My Brother Jack. <laughs> Stereophonics, Vegas two times, XFM 104.9, into the last hour. Yeah. And then three shows to go. That's true enough. Until we're off the air. I'm Ricky Gervais. <laughs> With him, Steve Merchant. Carl. Oh, yeah. All right? Yeah. Let's go on, tell you, um, you, we, we cut short last week, weren't we? You, you had a, you had an amazing story about Neil Armstrong, didn't you? Well, we've been doing quotes, haven't we? Like famous quotes. Sure. Yes. I've, you know, gone down in history. Yeah. And, um, I was <laughs> saying, you know, quotes don't really matter. Um, <laughs> it's, it's more the situation that you're in than, than the quote itself. Go so on. So, like, Neil Armstrong, yeah. if he'd have said, what, um, I, you know. Tie bacon round your head. I'm as happy as a pig in dust. Yeah, that would have yeah. still gone down in history as, like, being the thing that Neil Armstrong said, wouldn't it? Yeah. Yeah. But space is driven but, in mental, probably. Would but, have been, but, yeah. but 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 he chose to say something profound <laughs> and yeah. meaningful uh, to uh, befit the situation. It's well, he got it wrong. Actually, it's uh, uh, a small small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. But he was meant to say. Yeah, we discussed this last week. Well, Rick. Yeah, Stop yeah. showing off. Well. No, but people might not have listened last week. Yeah, it doesn't I mean, matter. I can't imagine well, people We better tell them every week then. Yeah, but uh, he said, uh, he should have said, this is one uh, small step for a man. Yeah. But anyway, he had a good effort and that's quite And, and that's, that's quite an example of, of what I'm saying. The fact yeah. that he got it wrong, but it still went down in history. Right. But anyway, the bit that, uh, and it didn't happen anyway, did it? What do you mean it didn't happen anyway? That's what a lot of people say. That no one's actually been on the moon. Ah, uh, yes, of course. They, they filmed it in Teddington Studios. Well, they were saying something about there was shadow on the film and you won't get shadow on the film and there's, uh, there's all sorts of things. You know, these people that you always quote as they. <laughs> Who are they? Are, are they living in jars? Are they little fellas in jars? Look, Go on. You know. Do they appear to you in I've, dreams? I've spoke <laughs> to different people about it and there's loads of little things that if you watch that program, they're, that, you know, of, of them being on the moon, there is no way they could have done it. Right. <laughs> Done. Fine. Yeah. Done. Anyway. That's put to bed. Yeah. But Good. anyway, as he was getting back in the spaceship on the moon or whether it be a TV studio, yep. he said, uh, good luck, Mr. Croucher. Right. Have you heard this? No. 
And the reason he said that was because when he was a young kid, and he was pl I think it was Croucher, but when he was playing as a young kid in, in his garden, he was playing baseball with his mate, <laughs> and he chucked the ball to his mate, and his mate hit the ball, and the ball went over the fence to the next door neighbour, right? So he goes, right, I'll just nip over and get the ball. And as he was getting the ball, the window was open to his neighbour's house, and he heard, like, the woman shouting at her husband, saying, I'm not gonna be giving you, uh, a bit rude, so if you've got a kid in the car or whatever, turn it down. What, yeah, that's covered that, yeah. Right, um... Genius. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not, um, no matter how many times you ask me, I'm not gonna be giving you oral sex. <coughs> the day I do that, man would have walked on the moon. Right. right. Yeah. He grows up, he gets on the moon, and he remembers all that story, and as he gets back in the spaceship, he says, good luck, Mr. Croucher. <laughs> now, do you know, now, we'll have to say, I've heard that story before, but when I heard it, the woman said, the, 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 the day I give you a blowjob is the day the boy next door walks on the moon, which makes it all the more profane Impossible. and enjoyable. Yeah, yeah, and unlikely. Yeah. But yeah, no, I've heard, I've heard the same story, Carl. Yeah. <laughs> Look how pleased he is. I love that. Right, so not only have you remembered that anecdote, which may or may not be true, but of course you've also proven the that- The day uh, I give you a never job, even... that kid in the garden's probably gonna walk on the moon and say something about <laughs> giant leaps. <laughs> but, um, yeah, yeah, he must have heard the thing that it never actually happened. Yes, we've all heard yeah. it. We've all dismissed it as nonsense. <laughs> and moved on. Yeah. Yeah. And got on with our lives. Right, Carl. What? Should we do, uh, White Van Man? Well, you didn't, you didn't, you didn't prepare me for that. We better play a track and then I'll, uh, okay. out, I'll fish out the newspaper and stuff. Oh, oh right this is uh, oh, this is a good little, um, a little bootleg track here from, um, uh, Meats and Poultry here. They've, um, mixed, um, um, A with, uh, Outcast. Right. Of course, it's great. Is it highly illegal? It is. So people shouldn't rush to their tape machines now and press okay, play Okay, so record. whatever you do, don't, don't record this now if you're recording it. Hold on, don't say anything. All oh, that bootleg's going under the name of, uh, um, Nothing, Miss Jackson, I think, by, uh, Meats and Poultry. So there you go. I do love these bootleg things, because they're so pointless, but they're so enjoyable. Yeah, it's great. It's fun to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, they're, they're, really they're, good they're fun. great. But, um, not as much fun as White Van Carl. White Van Carl, absolutely. Um, do you want to explain the premise? Well, um, we take some of uh, the son, ask someone else, and ask Carl. It's as simple as that. That's the right. son of just taken a normal person, we flipped it. <laughs> We're gonna ask Carl the same questions about the week's news. Yeah, just basically your opinions, Carl, as ever. Um, what do you make? of, well, obviously the big news, David Beckham's broken foot. Is this uh, a big concern for you? No, I mean, it's sad, you know, um, it's, sad, it's sadder for him more than anyone, because, you know, to, to like, be in the World Cup is like the main thing for him, isn't it? Yeah. But he's still a young lad, and, uh, I don't think he'll give up, I reckon he'll still turn up, uh, yeah. he'll be alright, and, uh, yeah, good luck to the lad. You know yeah. I like David, I'm not gonna slag him off. <laughs> what <laughs> his words? <laughs> yeah, yeah. He says that like he knows him. <laughs> like he's popping round for drinks later. <laughs> yeah, like we tried to stitch you up. Go but, on. But, um, obviously yesterday, was it yesterday, I think, maybe maybe Thursday, uh, The Sun printed a big picture of, uh, David's, uh, foot mm. and encouraged everyone to touch it at midday, because hoping that this would somehow, um, if we all thought and prayed together, somehow that would help his foot heal. Do you, do you believe in that? No. Do you have any belief in that? No, you're going down the old, like, you're a gallery route, aren't you? Sure. I know, it's stupid. Yeah. I'm sure, I mean, it's nice effort and everything, it sort of cheers everyone up. Hold on, <clears throat> you believe in ghosts and warlocks yeah. and uh, licking toads. How, uh, wh why, why is that any more stupid and all those things? It just, it, it's not gonna work, is it? <laughs> <laughs> no, all right. Fine. It's rubbish. <laughs> okay. Okay, uh, what about this then? There's, uh, apparently now available 1.5 million pound apartments available on an exclusive ship which sails around the world. Yeah, it's like, uh... What do you make of that? It's a huge thing, and you just, you, you live on it, and it's, I mean, in theory... How big, how big is it? It's, um, it's mental. Do you it's know like huge a town in the centre. Do you know how, like, people said that the Titanic was the biggest ship? Was that only then? They've got yes. bigger ones now, haven't they? Yeah. A lot bigger. Oil tankers are much bigger, and... Yeah. No, but actual line is a big. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was. It was the biggest then. Yeah. Because my mum told me that there was one that that was that was that big that it had like rough areas on it. <laughs> 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 oh. 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 oh, oh, God! <laughs> oh. Don't go starboard. Oh God! No, but do you know That's what I mean. It was like we're, a, we're thinking of moving. We're yeah. seeing the captain. We're thinking of moving <laughs> to a nicer area. <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, I, <laughs> I've heard they're very rough in aft. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, that's They fantastic. steal your tyres. A how? ship so big that was <laughs> rough areas. Oh. How, how big is this one that, that you're <laughs> talking about? 
Uh, well, I don't know. It doesn't oh. give me the spe specifications here, but they, it's they're huge. huge. They're huge. Um, in theory, I mean, it's it's that thing with um. Uh, oh, it's obviously marketing, but um, they're gonna um uh, solve uh the uh, um, overpopulation crisis where soon we'll all be just be floating around the sea. Yeah, but yeah, <laughs> I can see that because I mean, <laughs> think about it, right? I've been talking to Ricky about it. I was hoping to buy somewhere in London, but there is no way in this world that I can afford it, right? Um, and you look at all the all the wasted space, like with the Thames. <laughs> All it's doing is like collecting crisp packets and stuff and coke yeah. cans, and people have to clean it up. Whereas if you think, if you got a load of boats on there, yeah, problem Perfect. solved. Yeah, would you live on a boat? Solved. Uh, what's his name? Did it? Didn't he? Uh, what's that program? Is it Bergerac? Noah. Oh, <laughs> Bergerac. There was one where where he lived on a boat. I think it's quite. Was that it was a shoestring. Yeah, I, I'd give it a go anyway. <laughs> Noah. I'd like to see you um, living in in the air, maybe in a giant hot air balloon. Yeah, all right, but um. No, the boat thing, um, cause it, it, it is gonna get bad as well, isn't it? They're saying that the water's melting or whatever. The water's melting, the, yeah. The ice is melting. Yeah. And, and there's gonna be more water and less land, so yeah. in the future it's probably gonna be the way we're gonna be living, isn't it? Have you seen that film Waterworld? Nah, I don't fancy it. Because yeah, that's that what happens? That's, that sort of predicts that, yeah. What, are they saying that the ice thing exactly. is melting? Exactly, yeah. But at the same time, um, I was thinking about this a couple of weeks ago. <laughs> if you get, I mean, I think I read that, like a big chunk of ice, uh, fell off one of the ice, uh, what do you call them? Caps. Ice caps. Something like, the, I think they said it's the size of the Empire State Building or something. Right. It, it snapped off and went into the water and it's melted. And they said, oh, it's bad news, you know, that, that something that size is melting. But the way I look at it, if something that size falls into the water, it's like a big ice cube and it's gonna freeze it up again. You, are you with me? Not no. really, Carl. Go on. Right, you get a giant ice cube. Yeah. The size of the Empire State Building. Yeah. Stick it in the water. Yeah. It's gonna make uh, that. It's gonna stick back on again, isn't it? Well, no. Stick uh, back only on if again. it freezes up again. Yeah, well, it will gonna freeze up. The water's well, gonna get cold again because you've just put a giant ice cube in the water. Well, so when you put <laughs> when you put an ice cube in a drink, the drink doesn't freeze, does it? No, the ice melts. Not, if you put one the size of an Empire State Building in your glass of Jack Daniels, <laughs> it's gonna make it freezing. <laughs> It's not going in a glass of Jack Daniels, it's going in the ocean. I know, but I'm- that, you see that I'm using my fables. Imagine a world- <laughs> Use your brain instead! Imagine the world, <laughs> imagine the sea, yeah. like the Arctic or whatever, as yeah. a glass of Jack Daniels. Okay. A big ice cube falls into it. Yeah. It freezes, it melts back on again. So it's- we're all right, I don't know why everyone's worrying. <laughs> Guys, God, thank God for that, I was getting panicked. Oh, fine. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah, no, you're right. Yeah, that will happen. <laughs> Should we play some more music and then come back to Wi-Fi? <laughs> yeah, this is, this this is, is better this, than ever. This is this dynamite this week. Hi, <laughs> <laughs> Nina, on XFM 104.9, we're doing White Van Carl. Got another one there? Uh, well, it's just uh, another- your thoughts really on, uh, the Queen Mum's, uh, very British send-off that she was given this week. Yeah. What do you make of all those people queuing up to see her? Did you think that was incredible? Right. Well, w we said last week, you know, there was a- I, I don't quite understand why there was so many people there, um, who were, like, getting really upset. Do you know what I mean? Really upset, crying and stuff, and, you know, you can lose someone who's, r like, related to you, and you don't- you don't cry like that. You sort of sit there and you think back to what you did with them and stuff, and- and then that's it. But, um, <laughs> the queue thing, it was- wasn't it, like, miles long and stuff? Yeah. It was, yeah. Right, I was sat watching this with Susan. Twelve like, hours queuing. Yeah. He never got to and twelve hours. It did, but it that did. was the estimated time. No, mm. how you know. long is a queue when they're just like you know walking along? Think how far you can sort of like st you know stagger in twelve hours. Incredible. It's been ridiculous. God. Yeah, but again, you know, if they want to do that, it's their time and that, isn't it? And it's, yeah. It was at the weekend, so they, they could have. It's not as if they got out of work to do it. No. You know, I mean, they used their own time, so good on them. But I thought, right, what they could have done. Remember when I studied Che Guevara? Yep. Yeah. Right. Um. And don't be offended by this, it was just an idea, because they did it with Che Guevara. Remember when they cut him up? Do yes, they, they cut him up, yeah. What was the reason for cutting him up? Uh, well, they cut up Che in order to try and, um, wouldn't they, you, you, you told us that they were gonna send bits of his body to Fidel Castro and various other people, wasn't that right? Uh, uh, as, as a warning, wasn't it, though, to all the to people, like, one to... Yeah, uh, my, my understanding was that they cut him up in order to, um, so they could bury him in different places so that there'd be one no shrine, there'd be, like, no, what, not one place that you could go to in order right. to, well, to a sort of make him like into a martyr. A little bit like that. I've, like, I six can vaguely see where this is going. Six cues, and it's like, number one, you can, you know, go and pay respect to her head, or whatever. Oh, God. No, but think, I just was thinking the way of, of speeding it up. I'm not having a go, I'm not, because they haven't done it, so it doesn't matter. God. But they did it with Che Guevara. 
Yeah. Everybody would have felt like they've got close to her. And it would have speeded it up. No, I mean, but I can understand. Can I just say that genuinely, Carl is not being disrespectful here. This is his best idea to to cut down the queues. So don't phone in. He's not suggesting we should have done this. He genuinely well, he is. is. It's, well, but I mean, he's not doing it to be nasty or wacky or or you know, he thinks this is a good idea. So can just I just throw a thought? Che Guevara was like a, a powerful man. He did a lot for the world and what yeah. have you. Yeah. Yeah. And have you, are you aware that I, I feel slightly responsible for this because have you heard of the quote, um, a little knowledge is a dangerous thing? Yeah. Okay. Steve, next mm, one. No, just, just, just a very quick question. I can understand those that have queued for 12 hours to see the head. <laughs> I'd be a little bit annoyed if I got there to find a toe. I'll tell you what though, I'll tell you what they could do without chopping her up. They could put about nine queues, each could see each hip she had. <laughs> That's true enough. Because she's, she's had about nine of them, yeah. so it'd just be, uh, uh, if you want to see the whole body, it's 12 hour queue. If you just want to see a couple of the hips. Here's another suggestion for you, I've just thought, <laughs> right? What? Instead of everyone queuing to see her, why not put her on a trolley <laughs> <laughs> and wheel her past everyone else? Running. So, so yeah, you could have, you could have some students on rag week that you can buy it. <laughs> <laughs> like when they're always pushing a bed. Yeah. You know, they could just run it along <laughs> oh. the queue. No, that'd, that'd be, be fantastic. That'd, that'd be disrespectful. <laughs> right, as opposed to the chopping up. So. Sure. So, right. But just, just an idea. Just I apologise now if yeah, anyone's yeah. offended. Yeah, Anyone offended, I'm sorry, but. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> finally, um, this is more frothy. Liz Hurley lying low, apparently, at Elton John's house to try and avoid the press now that she's had a child. That's a good mm -hmm. place to go to avoid the press. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Elton John's house. Yeah. Everyone seems to be friends with Elton John. Yeah, Every they celebrity they, friends. Why did they pop into Elton John's house? What is he running some sort but of. But it was like when Robbie Williams was a drunkard and a drug addict, he went to Elton John's. Yeah, yeah and, and it was the other fellow that went there as well, was someone to, you know, to recuperate and uh, cry, shoulder to cry on. Is he, is he giving out false yeah. f passports? But I don't like know if people have seen his history. He's not the man of, you know, I mean, I know he's cleaned himself up now, but, you know, uh, maybe yeah. that's it. Maybe he's got this kind of insight into uh, how to deal with celebrity. Yeah. What well, do you think? I think it's just genuine oh. mates with him. I think he's I just like so. a friendly I bloke. Think she's been doing too much lying low in the first place. That's part <laughs> of the problem, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> High that five, Carl. That was a genuine joke from Carl there. And he's so proud of himself. Look at his little face. Too much lying low. <laughs> Oh, that was no, Mike Van Cunt. No, why, why can't she just go around to her mum and dad's or something rather than Elton John where everyone's looking? Yeah. 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 <laughs> That's the point, isn't it? Yeah. So that was good, yeah. Very good, oh. yeah. Right, what music we got? We got, uh... Bit of Flaming Lips. Flaming Lips, excellent. That's a, the classic Race for the Prize. Should have been a big hit, never was, sadly. Sadly. The Flaming Lips and Race for the Prize. Just playing that, Rick, for everyone who emails us in. We get a lot of emails every week, but uh, we obviously don't really respond to them because we're very lazy people, but uh, we obviously appreciate it. And I play that particularly for uh, Claire, who's emailed in saying uh, her friend Sarah Prosser would like some Beatles. We're not going to play the Beatles this week, but uh, Sarah apparently loves us more than words can express. More than Carl could express. <laughs> Absolutely. I'm going to stop you there, Pete. You don't want an Spread your love on XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais with me, Steve Mitchell. <laughs> and now it's Carl's bit. It's Carl's. It's the re-education of Carl. He's like Liza Doolittle. And now he's, uh, he's coming to- or Lawn Mower Man, if you've seen that film. More like Lawn Mower Man, if you've seen the film. You'll know what I mean. Um, uh, and, uh, his homework was to just study quotes, really, on- on happiness and stuff and general well-being. He's not a big happiness, uh, quote fan, are you, Carl? Not really. So what have you done? You've- you've come up with something, haven't you? Right, yeah, I told you, right? Because a lot of these are just things you say every day. They're nothing special. Um, so what I'm doing- Well, you say them every day. Well, <laughs> yeah. the sort of things you come out with and you don't even think about it, do you know what I mean? Yeah. They're in, they're on the TV all the time, people on the radio are saying these sort of little quotes. Sure. And, um, what I've done is, remember that programme on Channel 4, Faking It? Yeah. Where they got some, like, posh kid to be on a door and all that. What I've done, <laughs> I've, um, <laughs> Imagine if that was the pitch <laughs> for the show. Dear Channel 4, <laughs> just gonna get yeah, a posh kid on a door or something? Yeah, yeah, Yours come in, Carl. come in. Yeah. TV yeah. producer. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, go on. So, what I've done, <laughs> this little book of quotes, uh, happiness quotes, I've, um, I've picked two that are real. Okay. And I've made one up, right? <laughs> and we've got a guess. And you've got a guess. Okay then, go on. Well, I'll tell you what, Rick, why don't we, when we've heard them, we won't confer. No. You'll write down yours, yeah. A, B, or C, and I'll yeah. write down mine and we'll sure. see how okay, it Okay, Carl, off you go. Right, and just because I'm, I'm looking at this book, it doesn't mean I'm actually reading. No, I know, Don't no, worry, we're, we're clever. No, no, we know, we know, we can't see, yeah, yeah. like, call my bluff. Yeah, okay. go on in. Nothing is worth more than this day. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Alright. Yeah. 
the way I see it. <laughs> <laughs> Oh God, my head's gonna burst. No, hang on. My head's gonna burst. No, hang, hang no, on. this might not be cold. Oh, it might not be. How do you know I haven't tweaked them a little bit? Yeah, good okay, point. Good enough. point. No, good point. The way I see it, if you want the rainbow, you got to put with the rain. Yeah. Okay. okay. All right. All right. Yeah. Okay. Hang on. Yeah. Come on. Cat food. <laughs> Cat food, go on. It stinks a bit, but if you don't put up with the smell, the little kitten will die. <laughs> <laughs> Steve, Steve, I don't know what to say. <laughs> I don't know what to say. Imagine this in faking it. Imagine their faces when he says that, and they're going, "Oh my god!" Oh. Carl, play a song, mate. <laughs> oh. We'll have to confer on this one. <laughs> <laughs> Blair. Well, that that's just amazing, Carl. Just read them again. Two two were real, one was fake. Go on then. Right. Uh first one. Nothing is nothing is worth more than this day. Excellent. Next one. What does that mean? Well, cherish cherish yeah. now, cherish your yeah. time. Okay. Because you you, uh, you can't get it back and yeah. you know that's where um, I saw it. Carpe diem, whatever it is, seize the day and all that. Okay. If you want the rainbow You've got to put up with the rain. Yeah, of course. Yeah, rough with the smooth. You know, it's not all plain sailing, but, you know, rainbow's beautiful, but it comes because of the rain, which you might not like, so... Yeah. Make the most of everything and, yeah, yeah. good. <laughs> Cat food doesn't smell good, <laughs> but if you don't put up with it, then the little kitten will die. <laughs> right, now, Carl, that is a good effort. Now, that one's yours. I mean, obviously, right? Right. Right, no, no, but it's a good effort. Right. I mean, it slipped seamlessly into the others. Yeah. I don't think it didn't. <laughs> no, but it's this good. I mean, we knew it, we knew it was that one, but, um, what I will say is, it's good, but what you don't know, maybe subconsciously, is, I mean, it, it, it's n very similar to, uh, the putting up with the rain and the rainbow, but what, that's good. Why do you think that? Well. What, what does mine mean? Well, uh, ev well, even though it smells bad, it's good for something. Right, so see, I, I didn't look at it like that. What, what did you look at that? Uh, I, I kind of thought... Was yours more specifically about cat food, <laughs> generally? Because <laughs> <Right. laughs> you know normally they like, it's an analogy. Yeah, or a metaphor for something, you know, much well, bigger. Well, no, the way I... I mean, Do it. Dolly Parton, who I think did the rainbow rain thing, she wasn't specifically concerned about weather conditions. No. It was a sort of general idea. Yeah, it was all about yeah, life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that's, that's what I've done. Go on. Okay. What, I've what, used what, an everyday thing. Yeah. And put it with today's problems, right? Go on. So, like, um... My girlfriend, yeah? Um, she might like to go shopping for clothes. I hate it. Right. But because of, because I love her, I put up with it. Ah, oh, that's nice. Yeah? Yeah. So, you, you love that little curtain. You can't stand the smell of the stuff you got to feed it. But because you love it, you go, well, you know, I'll put up with this just for a few minutes and then I can, like, squeeze its head later and give it a little- <laughs> <laughs> Sorry! 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 Can we- can we go back? You know, stroke its head and stuff. Oh, right. Yeah. Sorry, it was a bit of a slip, was it? <laughs> Squeeze its little head. <laughs> no, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's just the thing that I do with cats. <laughs> Put it in a bag and drown <laughs> it in a lake. <laughs> I can feed it and then I can throw it against <laughs> yeah, the wall. Exactly. So you, yeah. didn't, you didn't see it like that, did you? No, that's very good. So it's about love, is it? It's about putting up with the bad things yep. but for, for something you love. Yeah. Well, that's nice. But, but, but Carl, good. you seem now to be convinced and rather smug that you've tricked us and that you've fooled us and that we didn't understand it. Well, but I say that's your fault, not ours. <laughs> No, it's not, though. I mean, look, that man in Forrest Gump, he was a bit of a nutter. <laughs> <laughs> and he, he came up with the life is a box of chocolates thing. Yeah. Now, if that was in this book, you'd say, oh, yeah, brilliant, you know, a good bit of work. But if he was sat here doing the show with you, yeah. you'd be taking the mickey out of him. Sometimes I feel he is. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, Carl, I could, I could, in fact, if people are out there, we're too lazy, could you write down everything Carl's ever said? Because I think we could publish that. Yeah. He said one today, he saw my, um, uh, salamander. It's not a euphemism. <laughs> he saw my salamander and it's just sitting there in the tank. Your exotic pet. Yeah, and he's worried about there's not being a lid on. And he said, I went, what were we worried about? He said, he said, well, he said it sits there for 24 hours a day, obviously planning to get out. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's got nothing else on its mind. And it's, <laughs> the, the daft thing is, he has actually got the, like, the lid ripped up a little bit. Like, mm -hmm. yeah. it's got nothing else to think about. <laughs> 
<laughs> not be looking up there. Yeah. And it's gonna get out. But what's the worst that could happen? What's Carl? it thinking? What do you think it's thinking, this salamander? It's got its eye on the DVD player. <laughs> 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 I could have E and be down the market. Well. Oh! Oh, God! Are they, are they dangerous? Could I just say something? Are they dangerous? I think the salamander's thinking exactly the same things as you. I mean, to look at you, you've got the same expression on your face. You know what I mean? Uh, you're dressed in green as well. He's, you've got a little round sort of Hamburglar type head, <laughs> like the salamander. Very similar. <laughs> and yet you, you know, you, I think, and you bonded with it, didn't you? you yeah. Were... But I, I probably would have tried to get out, but my little paper round bag would just hang <laughs> on the <floor. laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Listen, um, can we have more nepotism on the show? I know Go that on. we uh, did that earlier with the uh, we teacher soundtrack. Long, have we? we yeah. have my uh, housemate. You remember I was working out with him last week to uh, Helen from Big Brother's dancer size video. That's just frightening. Yeah, we, we we've we've kind of let that slip a little bit. I've got to be honest. But anyway, he's joined this band. They're called uh, Fujia and Miyagi. Slightly difficult to pronounce. But uh, anyway, this is a track that I think's been getting some play by uh, Nick Luscombe and John Kennedy on XFM. They got a gig this week at the Pool on Curtain Road. Uh, that's 18th of April Thursday. Uh, let's play it. Can I just say I've got a fridge freezer for sale? <laughs> 400 quid or nearest offer. <laughs> <laughs> for Gia and Miyagi, performing live uh, Thursday the 18th of April uh, at the Pool on Curtain Road. Admission is free, Rick. So you're, I imagine you'll be heading down there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I will. <laughs> well, I've enjoyed this show. Yeah, it's been a good one. It's great. It's been great. Carl, any more? I'll oh, tell that story that you were telling me about your dad when he was driving. Well, it's just that you were talking about, well, I, I mentioned Forrest Gump. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, the Forrest Gump types. When my dad was a, uh, when he was a taxi driver. Yeah. You used to have to, uh, sort of do, y do your bit for the local area. Oh, God. By taking the, uh, the yeah. Forrest, the Forrest yeah. Gump yeah. people to, to Blackpool. Yeah. Is that what they're called now, the Forrest Gump people? <laughs> Is that what the, uh, the organisations that support them are? <laughs> for them to be referred to A mini bus <laughs> with, exactly. uh, uh, life is a box of chocolates yeah, exactly. dot com. Well, oh, Forrest Gump types. Uh, it yeah. must be, so you work with these people. It these was, pe yeah, yeah. Right, yeah, the people with learning difficulties. Difficult yeah, yeah, and they used to get fired. Coming home must have been a busman's holiday. <laughs> 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 so he got five of them in the uh, in the cab, yeah. and he had to go to Blackpool. And four of them were really good, you know, behaving themselves, didn't mess about, weren't fighting and stuff. But there was one who was just causing loads of trouble, and he couldn't control him. Oh, and what you've got to be able to do with people like that, you don't want them to get stressed out because it's it's not good for them. It stresses them out, and oh, and you could God. end up with a bit thanks, Doctor Carl. <laughs> you could end up with a bit of a riot on your hands. <laughs> so, <laughs> so he thought, I'll nip this one in the bud right now, and. Um, he pulled up just on the outskirts of Blackpool and, um, he took the one out that was causing problems and put it in a wheelie bin. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Oh, I'm sorry. I apologise. Oh, he did what? God. Oh, He God. did it for the good of the others. He put oh. it in a wheelie bin. It was having a good time. He thought it was one of the rides. <laughs> Can you stop saying it? <laughs> Him. Yeah. He, he, you know, he was having a good time, was and and he once he calmed down, my dad went back and picked <laughs> him up, and it, he was fine. He had a good. What day. he left him in there the whole time the others were in Blackpool? No, he left him there not not the whole day, probably about an hour and a half. <laughs> in a wheelie bin. In a wheelie bin. Why couldn't he get out? Because like his arms were trapped on the thing. Some <laughs> of those one. <laughs> what he tied him mean? up? No, do you know like when because he was a big fella, and like he, he managed to get him in so his arms were down the side like that, so it was he was a bit trapped. Wasn't and he screaming and crying and stuff? He was making a bit of no noise, but it, do you know what I mean? What you feel, sir? <laughs> right. <laughs> well, but anyway, that's I didn't really want to talk about. It. You just brought it up because of Forrest Gump. Did, did you did, do his you know family know about this? Is this the first time he, they've he, heard about this? He didn't get asked to do it again. Because <laughs> because he had another he had another problem similar to it where he had a, a little minibus <laughs> and it was his job to take a load of old women to the bingo hall and yeah. it was miles away. And, um, he took him there, there was no problem, about, about ten old women in a, in a minibus. One of them was causing trouble. <laughs> 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 so he pulled over it. <laughs> no, right, so he took him there, uh, everything's fine, he dropped him off, they had a the lovely pin. night. Yeah. Right, they had a lovely night, won a bit of cash. Coming back, it's a bit of a late night, and they all started moaning at him, going, I wanna be dropped off here, take me there, I wanna be dropped off first, I've gotta get up early, blah blah, you know, my husband's expecting me, I'm already late, take me here first, take me there. And he just pulled up. <laughs> in the middle of nowhere, so get out. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, he made them get out, and they all called for taxis. <laughs> they charged that company who was meant to be taking a moment in the minibus, and he got the sack. Jeez. But a similar sort of story. You can't be dealing with it when people don't sort of just calm down and like solve the situation. Yeah. They're just all like, I want to be dropped off first, take me here first, take me. Yeah, so he acts oh, like yeah. a madman. <laughs> 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 
That's good. Oh, that was All right, great. We've got, uh, we've got to crack on, haven't we, really? We've got Says uh, so much. Yeah. Yes, uh, Nick Drake, a song for the ladies this week from the album Brighter Later at the time of a city clock. That's Goodbye. it. Right? Yeah, Goodbye. See you next time. Bye.